Today we're going to try and figure out why our Titan X Maxwell card, which is labeled as 9 ATI, but it's not, why it kind of stopped working. So this is a card we've used in our render machine uh, since one of our updates last year. We turned it into a hybrid. It's done pretty well, but recently the machine was heating up the card to a point of like 90 degrees Celsius when it was barely doing any work. So clearly something's very wrong and the card wasn't performing well. We were having actually laggy input and window movement on the monitor that this card was powering specifically. Uh, so it had to be taken out and replaced. And we're just gonna try and diagnose it here. I don't know if I'm gonna find an answer, but the plan is take it apart, uh, look at some of the power components, and then I don't think I'm gonna see anything there. So what we're probably gonna do is empty the liquid cooler and see if it still has liquid in it or if it's fully permeated. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So this card was in the render machine. It's been through a lot. It's got a liquid cooler on it, obviously. And the radiator for the CPU is positioned above this liquid cooler but it was still operating reasonably cool and we have three front fans in the case so it should be getting enough air back to the gpu so really it should have been okay thermally from our end uh it's possible that the liquid was reaching 60 degrees or higher but that's pretty unlikely and very uncommon especially when it's in a case that's as well ventilated as our PM01 is. So we'll see. It might not even be the liquid cooler. That's the problem. It might just be something else went wrong. There could be poor contact maybe, which we'll see by looking at the thermal compound spread. Maybe that's gotten contaminated or super dry. You can see on this card too, this is when they put the memory on the back of the card. So I think this, where was this card? This card was positioned in which slot? It might've been the bottom slot, I think. Yes. I'm pretty sure this was in the bot in the lower slot and there's a 10 ATI above it. So it's possible the memory was overheating or getting hot anyway, but without a thermal probe on there, it's hard to really say if that was the problem. But we could add a back plate to it to try and help that. Yeah, that's really not that bad. So dust here, but nothing that kills performance. This was clearly installed clean from the silk screen. You can still see it at the borders. And it's pretty dry, but that wouldn't cause it to go to 90. Yeah, SK Hynix, that's memory. There's memory on the front too. I guess these were um, half gigabit modules or something. I don't remember how much this card has. So no capacitors that are exploding. Is that liquid right there or what is that? That looks like liquid. It might just be grease from the thermal pads. Although actually you can see a droplet of it on this pad. But I took this out a long time ago, so. Like, you see that? So there's some, clearly some liquid here. I can't tell if it's uh, glycol or not. Doesn't smell like it. Actually, uh, maybe it does. I can't tell. Uh, I think what we need to do is remove the cooler from here and see if it has any liquid left in it. So if anything spilled in here, you can't really see it at this point but I took it out a while ago, so 
it should be dry by now. I guess some of whatever is on the thermal pads, whether that's just grease from heat or uh, actual liquid, remains to be seen what that is. But um, I guess we can probably open this up, see if the problem has something to do with the uh, the pump or not, or the the coolant permeating the tubes. Oh, that's right, these strip themselves really easily. I can smell propylene glycol now. The fact that we haven't had any liquid come out yeah, that's that helps seal it. Typically, you get a little bit of leakage when you re, when you remove that plate. So, oh, fuck these Ace Tech plates. So this is the thing. The thing Ace Tech goes crazy with making sure their plates are secured to the point where it's really easy to strip these if you don't apply a lot of force because they're so tight and that prevents any leaks from the cold plate area so a leak really shouldn't be a problem there's no way liquid got out of this part if any got out at all what's more likely is that there was permeation if the pump is even the problem and it might not be or that the pump itself just died, which is also very rare because pumps tend to only die if they're not getting enough liquid uh, or they're not cool enough, which is because they're not getting enough liquid. That's the easiest one we've ever taken the screws out of. Okay. There's coolant in there but it didn't come spilling out. So let's see how much we get out of here. Really to know if it's a permeation problem, I'd have to open another one of these that's brand new, which I, I do have them technically. And then measure them against each other. So it's pretty empty. So that, so far that has not told us anything. There was coolant in there. It doesn't look like a lot. Uh, 100 milliliters. That might be enough for one of these. First, we might as well see if the, uh, the pump actually works on this. Just want to do that enough to get all the liquid out. And it sounds like it's spinning. Yeah, pump spinning for sure. It's possible that this isn't even the problem, but uh, now out of curio pure curiosity and science, we're gonna open another one and just see if it's the same amount of coolant or not. So our starting point is exactly 100 milliliters, which is awfully round of a number and leads me to believe that we don't really have any permeation, but let's find out for sure. Actually, we can look at the microfins too and see if there's any gunk in them. I mean a bit. There's definitely a bit in there, but it's not that bad. There's some debris down in the middle. Okay. Next one. They're both like 100 milliliters. 
So we didn't have permeation. Which, like, yes, it sucks to open one when we didn't need to. But also, you know, looking at it from my perspective, I don't want to suggest that there was permeation uh, and implicate their product without checking it. Because a lot of people watch the videos, so we don't want thousands of people going off of a baseless assumption. I mean, it's not fully baseless, but it, without being proven, you know, can't really say anything. So... That's like one completely unused, well, not completely, but pretty unused unit and one heavily used unit. And they both come out to 100 milliliters, like exactly almost. So um, I would say that's not the problem, permeation that is. Let's see if this one has the same amount of debris in it. This does look a bit cleaner, but that that I don't think that accounts for... 90 degrees operating temperature. I don't think it's the liquid cooler. Same amount of liquid. The pump works on the old one. Hopefully it's a little dirty, but it's okay, probably. Unless it's like super jammed up. No, it's fine. So that leads me to guess maybe my guess is overheating memory. Well, no, because I said the GPU core was overheating. I don't know, it could be thermal paste drying up, it could be loose contact between the plate and the card. Capacitors look fine. I mean, logic would tell me overheating memory on the backside given the circumstances, but again, the core wasn't overheating. So the fan spun up when we turned that on, so the fan's fine. The pump spins, there is liquid in it. So what does that leave? I got to go with poor contact. Uh, if it loosened a little bit, you know, if it was, if it, if it were just a little bit too loose and we were microns off, that would be enough to cause the problem. So what I think I'm going to do is, uh, is probably put the reference cooler back on or an Arctic cooling aftermarket cooler. Oh, that's a cool chip. I actually never noticed that before. Total sidetrack, just kind of cool how it's raised up like that. But I think we're gonna put a different cooler on here just, just to be sure, see how it does with air. And if it does well, then I might put it back under liquid. If it doesn't, there's clearly something very wrong uh, with its ability to <laughs> regulate the temperature basically, but it doesn't seem like the cooler was at fault. And that was the point of opening two of them to make sure if I blamed the cooler, we were sure about it. Um, VRM should be fine because it wasn't the VRM that was overheating. So yeah, I got to go with loose contact or something like that. So I will, I'm not sure when I'm going to do this. Maybe we'll end up doing it on a, a live stream instead, but I'm going to put a different cooler on here and test it and see if the temperature comes down. And if it does, then my assumption is poor contact. But just thought we'd do some diagnostics. I had to do it anyway. Might as well film it. And uh, at the very least, you get to see how much liquid exactly is in these coolers so that if you were to empty your own, you could check against ours and see if there is permeation and if it's the cooler's fault. It's about 100 milliliters, basically. And as long as the pump spins, then it seems like another problem. Uh, as far as the cable I used, these are pretty useful too, so maybe you can use this, if nothing else in this video. These cables, I think I bought from China, they're four pin, uh, four pin PWM to a four pin, um, like a GPU fan cable, basically, so that's, that connects with your pump and video card fans, and then you're able to connect that end into the motherboard if you wanted to slow down the pump speed and make it quieter. But we use that to test the pump works, and it does. So, yeah. Basically, not sure why it's having issues. It's not like it failed. The card still boots and everything. It's just having problems with temperature. So I'll look into it more and 
maybe we'll do another video publishing if we're able to fix the problem. But for now, it's, uh, it's haunted with some kind of thermal ghost. So we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. I'll see you all next time.